Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to go back to Fresno. Fresno is a city full of gangs. Around seven months ago, I did an episode about one of Fresno's most known gangs, the Bulldogs. But in this episode, I'm going to talk about the 107 Hoover chapter in Fresno. The Hoovers are a big gang worldwide. Starting over four decades ago in South Central, they consist of several cliques like the Five Deuce Hoovers, the Five Nines, the Seven Foes, the Eight Trays, the Nine Deuces, the Nine Foes, the 107s, and lastly, the Eleven Deuce Hoovers. The 107 Hoovers were formed in the 70s when the future Hoover legend named Moo Moo formed the Hoovers in the Hundreds and helped them become one of the well-respected gangs and Hoover cliques. During the 80s, several LA gangs started to spread out to other cities and states during the drug trade. A lot of gangs started making new chapters of their gangs once they arrived in the new cities and states. This led to Crips and Bloods being spread out all throughout the country. Hoovers became one of those gangs. The Hoovers have established Hoover sets in Seattle, Houston, Portland, Oklahoma City, St. Louis, Memphis, New Jersey, Baltimore, and New York. And that's just to name a few cities. With Hoovers being crisp when they were brought to these cities, most of the new chapters didn't become Hoover criminals like the original LA chapters, but they remained crip like the five deuce Hoovers in LA. One of the only Hoover chapters established in California outside of LA is the Fresno chapter. The 107 Hoovers from LA took their culture to Fresno decades ago, and ever since, have established a gang there. Fresno is around three to four hours away from LA, so that distance was easy to set up shop. Just like the Hoovers in LA, the Fresno chapter got a lot of rivals. Fresno, like many other cities, is broken into too many gangs and alliances. Some of the African American gangs in Fresno is the Modak Boys, the U Boys, Garrett Street, East Lane Crips, Dog Pound, Stroder, Villa Posse, Lee Street, Clady Mob, and several more. Hoovers have a few alliances, but they're known to be for a lot of gangs. With that being said, let's get into some cases. On October 2nd, 2011, around 6 a.m., Police got a call to go to Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. You know when you hear that street name to get the hell out the area. This location was the apartments known as the Brownies. Once the police got into the apartments, they saw a man named Felipe sitting in a pool of blood next to his car. His pockets were inside out like he got robbed. Felipe was taken to the hospital but wouldn't survive being shot in the head. Inside the car, they found the car being trashed and ran through. They even got a clear fingerprint and had some hair left over. This will all lead back to a man named Kaylin. Anonymous tips would say Kaylin and another dude named Walter were responsible for Felipe losing his life, and just a few weeks later, both were detained. October 27, 2011. Walter and Kaylin were separated, and Walter went straight into running his mouth. He told police Kaylin called him to go on a lick, which he agreed. When they didn't see anybody on the street, they decided to go to the Brownies, where Kaylin wanted to run into somebody's house. Walter said Kaylin had the strap and was mad when Walter said he didn't want to do a home invasion. Walter said Kaylin called him a little hoe and they decided to leave the brownies. When they was leaving the brownies, Kaylin seen Felipe sleeping in his car and wanted to rob him. Now police must have Walter shaking like a 304 in the cold because he kept running his mouth over and over. He told police Kaylin rushed Felipe's car and once Felipe woke up, he shot him. Walter denied he had anything to do with it. He said it was all Kaylin and that's why his fingerprints wasn't on the car. By this time, police brought Kaylin in the room. Kaylin and Walter began to argue in front of the police Kaylin asked Walter did he tell the truth, and Walter admitted that he did. Then the interrogation room became a Hoover snitchathon. Kaylin told police he didn't shoot Felipe, and that it was just him and Walter on a robbery, so it had to be Walter. Police broke them and turned against each other. All Kaylin and Walter both did was blaming each other. They were snitching on each other so much, all you heard in the room was, Kaylin was like, on Hoover I didn't do it. Walter was like, on the H he did it. Well, all the snitching they did, they both still were charged with the crime. Both have possible parole hearings with them being minors at the time in the next 10 years. This next case is about a man named DeJounte from Modak Boys, a rival of the Fresno 107 Hoovers. On August 10th, 2012, around 10.30 p.m., DeJounte and his homie BJ entered a store called Bag O' Bad when they ran into Javon, who was from 107 Hoover, and his cousin Jamal. Both groups would mug each other, but later ran into each other outside of the store. Jamal and Javon walked up on DeJounte and BJ, which all was captured on camera. It was said DeJounte pulled out his strap and started shooting. Jamal would be shot several times, taking his life. DeJounte and BJ didn't run away. Several witnesses would give police descriptions of both, and the store owner gave a video tape so both were later picked up. DeJounte told police he didn't shoot at anybody. DeJounte told the police that he was holding a phone in a video, not a strap, and that the shots came from a nearby bus, not him. He said that like that dumbass lie was believable. 
But at trial, DeJounte would say he shot by accident and say he was scared that Jamal was pulling out his own strap, so he shot out of fear. DeJounte ended up being sentenced to 75 years to life. Around 1.45 on May 25th, 2003, cops responded to a shooting outside of a store where they found a 107 Hoover named Aaron stretched out. Witnesses told police that Aaron was approached by a man, then was shot multiple times in the head, taking his life. A man named Little Deuce from Villa Posse shot Aaron, since the 107 Hoovers and the Villa Posse are rivals. Little Deuce was a known Villa Posse member and was a validated and documented member for years. Deuce had so much clout in the streets, every time a Hoover was getting shot up, his name was brought up. Multiple Hoover's houses were getting shot up, and they tried to pin Little Deuce to the crime, but it never stuck. This shooting did since it was caught on tape. Little Deuce received 25 to life. June 29th, 2014. Jose and his girlfriend were chilling in their car on the west side of Fresno. A car pulled up on them with three men, and the three men asked Jose where was he from. They said, you from Stroder? Jose denied that he banged, but the three men said, y'all still finna die. Jose's girlfriend began screaming, and they told her to shut up, and they started firing. Both were seriously injured, but both survived. A man named Tabari was picked up for the shooting. He was from 107 Hoover. That night, Tabari was out looking for anybody who was aligned to the Twomps. The Twomps is an alliance between several gangs in Fresno. Tabari would admit that he was jumped by them in jail, so he wanted to catch a few that night. Instead of catching ops, he caught some innocent people. Now his ass caught life. Tabari was sentenced to 80 to life. The 107 Hoovers have been making noise in the streets for years, so this all led to an indictment of them called the Operation No Fly. The operation was a two-year-long operation to bring down the 107 Hoovers and align cliques. This operation took down 42 people on 19 separate cases. One of the men arrested was a man named Marcelo. He has been charged with four shootings and taken four lives, and even ordering one behind bars. Some of the rivals that were killed were from Villa Posse and Dog Pound. Another man out of the many people indicted in this case is a rapper named Bankro Rado. If you don't know who he is, he's former NBA player Rayford Austin, aka Skip to My Lou's son. Allegedly, Rado was instructed by Marcelo to shoot a rival named Javante outside of his house. Allegedly, Rado picked up his homie Tarion to finish the job, which Tarion caught Javante outside his house and took his life. Several other 107 Hoovers were charged with conspiracies and assisted in several crimes. Rado has a lot of charges against him at the moment, and he's currently fighting them in jail. The police currently have a lot of Fresno Hoovers in jail and affiliates trying to take them down as a whole. With this indictment just happening this year, everybody currently still awaits their fate. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, Make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.